All right. Good afternoon, everybody. How y'all doing? You know, and I'm gonna just well, while I while I can and while I have the opportunity. My biggest hurdle as a consultant is, man, I deal more with people's feelings. Everybody going through something and I have to battle what people have heard. You know, like I, I was on the phone with one one client and the client was like, well, my lawyer told me I needed this. And it's like lawyers practice law. What do they what, who said that just because they're a lawyer, they know anything about business structure? The lawyer told them that they needed a board for their corporation. And I was like, that's not true. It's you a private corporation. You don't operate under the same rules as a public corporation. Well, my lawyer told me that I should be an escort. Why does your lawyer tell you what you need to be? Your lawyer know your future? Come on, man. My CPA told me this. Yo, man, listen. I have more issues as a business consultant dealing with people and all of the things that they've heard than actually helping people fix their business hello everybody and so here we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna talk about so first and foremost if this is your first time ever hearing me speak type me in the comments please type me if this is your first time ever hearing me speak all right if you have an llc type llc in the comment we'll just get into it then detailing automotive and marine vehicles thinking about starting my llc what would you recommend um do you want to be attached to the business or do you want the business to be a separate entity it ball is that it simply it, it, it really boils down to that do you want the business to be attached to you or its own entity no i know you're gonna own it but for instance if i look at you or better yet, if i look if i walked up to your business right now would you want me to see you or would you want me to see the business? If I want to sue the business, would you want me to sue you or the business? Which one is better for taxes and sue the business? So there's only one structure that allows you to be separate from the business. And that is a C corporation, not an LLC. And that's where most people fail to realize, you know, that principle. And the reason why that is, is because, um, LLC is an unincorporated association. I think, and I think that alone, you know, just actually saying that a LLC is an unincorporated association. That means that it's not incorporated. Do we, did that make sense? An LLC is an unincorporated. That means it's not a corporation. It's not. An LLC is not a corporation it's unincorporated and the irs tells you that automatically ty so if i go to get an ein number and if you ever if somebody ever told you seriously if somebody ever told you you have to make a certain amount of money to become this like in order for you to become an s corp or a c corp you have to make a certain amount of money that's a lie like don't ever allow nobody to tell you that that's untrue because before you do business you have to open the business. How could you open the business if you didn't make any money? I mean, how could you how could you structure yourself a certain way if you haven't made money? If before you conduct business with a person, you're supposed to go open it at the secretary of state level and get an EIN number, you didn't make any money. But you have to open the business in order to do business. So when somebody tells you, hey, you need a certain amount of money to become this, that's a lie. The IRS even even validates that by saying before applying for an EIN, that means before you even decide that you're going to get one, before you do anything, you, as you should have already, that means you should have thought about that. It should have been a part of your plan. It should have been a part of your business plan. Already determine what type of legal structure, there it is. Ding, 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 ding. Business or type of organization is being established. So don't let nobody, I don't care if they got a law degree. I don't care if they got their CPA license. Don't let nobody lie to you and tell you that you need to make a certain amount of money to open the business. That's not true. Because at no point, if you pick one of these, does it say you got to make a certain amount of money in order to, cho to choose this or to choose that? How much money you made when you opened your LLC? None. But you still opened it. A limited liability company is a company allowed by state statute. That means... At no point can you ever be taxed as an LLC. There is no tax code for an LLC. You're either taxed as a sole proprietor, partnership, that's corporate corporation, right? 
So now whenever you select limited liability company, it, bear, it basically tells you everything that the LLC is, what it is and what it is not. As I've mentioned before, LLCs are not incorporated. To be incorporated means a business is incorporated when it has been granted a charter legally recognizing it as a separate entity. Right there. That tells you if an LLC is not this, it can't be legally recognized as a separate entity. And the false narrative that has been pushed around for years is that people when they get an LLC they separate from the business that's not true with that being said whenever you open a business if you want people to purchase stock into your company you have to get approved through the Securities Exchange Commission the SEC and whenever you get approved through the SEC you have to have certain things in place but if you don't ever have anybody purchasing stock in your company then the rules that apply to public companies don't apply to private companies. And just to let you know, wealthy people own private companies as well. Berkshire Hathaway, which is owned by Warren Buffett, is a holding company that owns a diverse range of private businesses, period. So this conversation is not necessarily popular amongst you know common conversations. I'm constantly battling people's thoughts and a lot of the things that people have said, you know, that they've heard. And when we start to figure out who told people that all because somebody, if I told you all that I had a law degree, would that make the information any more true? Because I love it when people ask me, what's your background? As if I have to have a certain background to be able to know this stuff. And I think that's what I run in place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when people not only come to the table with preconceived ideas, they also come to the, ta the table with an unrealistic expectation as it relates to time. Let me explain that to you. Now, everybody come to me, and again, I've, I've mentioned this before. Everybody's number one question is, how do I get funding? Let me ask you this question. If you got a loan today, what would you use it for? If you got a business loan today, what would you use it for? Let me give you all a real story about payroll. Whenever you tell a lender that you want to use the money for payroll, and lessens your chances of getting a loan and don't let nobody fool you because i want this is this is one of those i want you to use your god-given brain on this one think about the principle of what you're going to use the money for you are going to use it for pay roll think about this for a second whenever you use a loan to pay a bill payroll you are giving money away to an expense that will not give you a return on that investment. If you got $100,000 and you spend $50,000 on payroll, then that money that you're going to pay them people is to do a job, not to, not to grow your business. It's an expense. Buying merchandise is cool. So you're going to buy inventory. Not a problem. So the question becomes, let's do the math. If you had $1,000, your inventory costs you $500. That means you only have 500 left. The money that you would spend to sell that $500 worth of material, I mean merchandise, you have to make sure that you sell it to give you back double your profit. That's a gamble. That's a risk. Advertising. Now, what are we thinking about? Now you're spending your money on reaching more people. That makes sense. If it's done properly, then... The money that you would spend on advertising should double, triple, and quadruple your exposure at least. And if you have, and it's just about numbers, the more people that you have that sees your product, the likelihood that you're going to have increased sales. If, you, if you're only marketing to 100 people and only 10 people buy, well, imagine if you market to 1,000 people and 100 people buy. See the difference? So a bank loves that. What are other things that a bank love, right? Equipment, not a problem. Well, for trucking companies, let's say that you want to go buy a new truck, using it as an example. The one question that the lender is going to ask is, do you already have contracts? Ain't no sense of buying a brand new truck and you ain't got loads. You see what I'm saying? Like, I get a lot of times people say, man, I just need money. And, okay, now watch this. And I want y'all to just catch you know always pay attention to the things that are not said if you say i need a loan to help grow my business i'm using it as an example 
So if you don't get that loan, your business not going to grow. How does that align with what you're currently doing? A bank's job is to make sure that you can pay the loan back. You should be able to demonstrate that you can pay the loan back before you get the loan. That's the only way you're going to get the loan. How are you making your money? That's where your sales come in. How are you generating your sales? See, see how the dots kind of keep coming back to try to make it make sense? How are you getting all of these sales, but you don't even have a web presence? Hey, Miss Electa, Miss Electa. Whoa, yours is about literally about a week and a half done. Man, we just had a whole meeting. We just had a whole meeting about you, Miss Electa. Just finalizing, I, I spoke to the Secretary of State on one of your conversions on one of your businesses today, out off the press. And we had to submit, um, give them a few more pieces of documentation and think you're going to be ready to rock and roll. You're going to be ready to rock and roll. So make sure, Miss Elector, you are checking your emails between this week and next week. Well, I say we should be pretty much having you at the finish line. So it's going to be it's going to be full speed ahead. Everyone, Miss Elector Howard, she is one who invested in her business. She got the entire journey to success package. Um, and before we can actually set up all of these phases, the most important phase is making sure that we can get the legacy built, right? Once we build it in this regard, we get all of these things built. Then as soon as we got the green light on all of them, see, I don't start with one. We start with them all. And as soon as we get the green light from the secretary of states and all of these different things that need to go on, then we go full speed with knocking it out. Just putting the pieces, it's like a it's like a puzzle, just putting the pieces together. And then before you know it, in about mm, six months to a year, Ms. Electa going to probably come on here and sing me a song in a minute like that, that part. So anyway, so going back to the lending, right? People don't even, people think that it's just about I'm going to get a business open and by the way, you can get a loan. See, and that's why if y'all pay attention, I'm always harping on the plan. Why am I harping on the plan? Because again... If you got a loan from a bank, the bank is going to want to ask questions and it has to make sense. Okay, you came to me for $50,000, not a problem. How are you going to pay it back? The only way that you can prove that you can pay it back is by showing them financial statements and a tax return that shows that you can afford it. So then when they say, okay, I see that you can afford the loan. Well, how are you getting that money? How are you generating the sales? Who are your customers? And let me go back over here. I'm going to share something with you all. Watch. I got an email from a lender and the lender was talking about, you know, expediting people's files, et cetera, et cetera, all that good stuff. Right. So I say, cool, not a problem. So then they sent me a list of all of their requirements, which I already knew what it was, but let me just show you some of the roadblocks that people were facing and they don't even understand why they're facing them. It's because we overthink the loan process. And the truth of the matter is it's pretty simple. Guess this. Let's see. On to open, 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 open. Let me make my screen bigger. Here we go. Test this out. Check this out. If y'all want to get funding, watch. So this is me sending out a note to my clients. Key requirements for approval. Check it out. Credit score, 575 to 600 now. I've told people this all day long. I'm always about giving people a loan. That has nothing to do with them personally, but because this is a community development financial institution, I've already went th I've already explained that in deep detail a couple of days ago. And at a high level, a CDFI lender is a community development financial institution. That means that they are trying to lend money to businesses that are going to develop the communities in which they operate. How do you develop a community? Easy by bringing businesses that pay taxes. Why? The tax dollars pay for. All of your, your water, your drainage, your police officers, your infrastructure, etc. So anyway, complete application, 2023 taxes, articles of organization or incorporation, business EIN, selfie, birth certificate, etc., etc., Ver uh, identity verification, business use of funds, voided check, etc., etc., right? Now... Qualifications for funding, business must be operational for at least six months, legal status is required, personal guarantee is mandatory. Voila. Reasons for decline. Now, if they are telling you how you are getting declined, chances are, if you fix the decline reasons, you can get funded. Here we go. 
insufficient cash flow what does that mean that simply means you have to be able to have money coming in your business to pay the loan back if you get a fifty thousand dollar loan and let's just say that your payment is a thousand dollars a month i'm using as an example you have to be able to demonstrate that you have enough cash flow to run your business take care of your current expenses and pay this loan back that's number one over three thousand dollars in past due debt they didn't say you couldn't have debt they just said past due debt what does that mean your current obligations shouldn't be more than three thousand dollars past due they didn't say you could not have debt a missed mortgage payment bankruptcy or foreclosure within the last 12 months if this ain't key this is telling you what it is if you have at least a good payment history on these things for 12 months you're good and let me help y'all just make an arrangement with your mortgage etc etc current loans in default or active liens against the business or individual current loans are in default did, did they say that you couldn't have other any other loans they didn't say that they just said your current ones are not in default or active liens against the business right frozen credit report this tells you right here all of these people that's telling you to go freeze your credit report you don't even realize what you're doing you're limiting the ability for the lender to go access your credit report they cannot under any circumstances do that because what's the narrative people that's going to freeze their credit reports why because somebody told you that's how you, re you repair credit see once that seed of doubt is sown you have no idea it just puts you further and further behind excessive negative daily balances what does that mean how can you afford to pay this loan if your bank account is always overdrawn inability to provide additional requirements required documents and here's the kicker everybody want a loan but they have no digital print put for their business how do you go get a loan and you don't even have a website they can't even verify that you legit this is one of the most common reasons right here no website and people and you you got people out here telling people you don't need a website what that's because you're only trying to satisfy one part of your business i teach people how to satisfy the whole business you got some people that only care about taxes taxes come once a year what you talking about what you doing from january to december think about this for a second y'all like just think about it like man people be hurting themselves oh i'm a real estate agent i don't need a, i don't i don't need I don't, I don't i don't need a website you're right you may not need one but the public who you're gonna need they need to see you have one. Oh, i get all my business by word of mouth i for that travel i guarantee you the lender don't care that you get business by word of mouth they want to sell you legitimate company if you have rentals in a business name and rents are paid to the business does it help absolutely absolutely but see when rent is paid to you and you go try to get a business loan that doesn't make sense you make the money not your business it's just small things that people overlook every single day in business and why they seem to struggle and i'm trying to tell you it's the small things that'll make your life better but you don't want to invest in the small things you don't want to invest in something that's going to change your life forever prime example and i'm gonna just use that as a, as a sidebar how much do you think it costs to change your life when it comes to business whoa anybody how much you think it costs to change your life all right now i'm gonna ask y'all this because i wanted to tan time is right knowledge is perfect but from a tangible perspective from a tangible perspective reading yes is very important research you have to know where to research a hundred dollars fair enough i am telling you that at a very 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 everybody out here selling something you got 15 million people selling books on how to build a business they got 15,000 people selling e-courses in your mind is like what do i get out of it i am saying to you whatever financial resource you put into that's what you're gonna get out of it so if you don't invest your money properly you're not gonna get a return on that investment properly now and i'm saying this to say your credit your think about this for a second now hold on thank you for asking the question thank you for asking the question so if you have if you clean up your credit on the main three but they check 
the other reports, what do you do? The first thing is to understand credit doesn't get you the money. Let me say this again. Credit don't get you the money. Your ability to repay is more important than credit, but it has to make sense. Credit just tells a story. If you can't articulate the story where it makes sense, then credit hurts you. I am telling you that credit does not get you no money. You know why? I am the perfect example. David, I owe you a call. I am the perfect example of that. When we got, when I got this, 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 this loan, I mean, this building, I needed an additional $500,000, right? I was self-contracting, meaning when we was opening the wedding venue, I was paying for everything out of pocket in terms of construction. I was getting reimbursed from the banks as a result of me being the contractor and the owner at the same time, when I got when i would have to buy equipment and lumber and all of that good stuff i would have to wait to the bank reimburse me so well naturally what did that do to my credit cards i was overutilized i was overutilized so much so my credit went from a 700 to 590 in a matter of two months 700 to 590 now, did I did that mean I had poor payment history? No, it did not. That just meant that I was really overutilized. That bank gave me five hundred thousand dollars for the five ninety. Credit ain't y'all problem. The history is the problem. The ability to repay is the problem. Name me a bank right now that will give you two hundred and fifty thousand dollars with a five seventy five. Name one. I'm not talking about. No grant. I'm not talking. I'm talking about a bank. Name me one bank that will give you two hundred and fifty thousand with a five seventy five, but yet you have a relationship with one. Will give you two fifty with a five seventy five. All you have to do is do the other stuff. They're saying credit isn't the most important thing in this deal. When it ain't the most important thing in this deal, Navy Federal won't even give you that. The most important thing in this deal, not 250, not a 250 working capital loan, they don't even go that high. I know it. The all, what, what matters to them the most is the ability to repay that loan back. And that's where people fail. They can't show that they can pay the money back. Why? Because they have been conditioned to think that every time they have a business, write everything off. When you write everything off, you show that you're losing. How can you possibly win if you're always showing that you're losing? You got two options. Pay to play or don't play at all. It's that simple. I just help business owners out of limit wasting money. There's a difference. And the crazy part is, catch this. Now, I'm not, y'all forgive me. Please forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Now, I'm about to be petty for just a second, please. Please know that it comes from a very sincere place. Sincere, 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 sincere. Here we go. I'm using it to make a point. I did a class on how to write a business plan, what's the importance of, of a business plan, all of that, an hour and a half long. I did another class that went so deep into the LLCs, it's ridiculous. Everybody asked for business credit. I did another class on business credit. I did another hour and a half segment on how to get funding. In my personal opinion, these four classes by themselves should change it, can change anybody's life. But then on top of that, I, uh, I, I wrote a, bo a book on how to build your business according to this, all eight phases. I wrote a book on how to build business credit in less than 90 days and i have a list of every lender that will work with businesses in each state 500 dollars, and even that is too expensive just for people people say educate themselves this is this is almost like a semester in class in school 500 dollars. even that is too expensive for some people it blows my mind how do you, and this is no offense to anybody, but I want y'all just to logically make it make sense to me. I run a business, but I don't have $500. When does that make sense? And I'm saying that it doesn't have to make sense to me. I want it to make sense to you speaking to somebody that you want to help, that you want, you want help from to build your business. If you aren't willing 
to invest in your future, how can anybody else help you to do it? What's the sense of you getting up every single day to work hard when you don't, you don't have $500? I am simply saying, I am not the man. Listen, I didn't been that. There's not one person on this live that can tell me what struggle is that I don't know firsthand. I know what struggle is. Oh, I remember back in the day. I remember when I got my first disconnect notice for a light bill many, many, many years ago. I remember, you know, I was I was one of those those people that grew up where I never. Well, let me show you. It got so bad. You know how sometimes when you go buy a bar of soap and you use that soap, you use that soap, and you got that one little thin piece of soap left, and you would, you know, you would throw that soap. I would never throw soap away because if I kept enough thin pieces of soap, it would make me one big bar of soap. I know what struggle is. You just go to my website. It's actually a self-paced class. I've already recorded the classes. I've already did it. It got ready the ebooks. You just go to my website underneath courses, services, courses, services, courses. I was, I was one of those kids that grew up where, you know, man, listen, I used to think eating dry cereal was a meal because we either didn't have any milk or the milk spoiled. I would take that dry cereal and that became dinner and a snack at the same time. I remember watching my grandfather eating a pork and bean sandwich because we didn't have any meat. At the end of the day, I refused to let that be the story of my life. So when people say the midnight snack, hey, hey, listen, listen, y'all have no idea. And, a cra and, and here's, you know, what, you know what I used to think was a gourmet meal? Yeah, you see fried egg and rice, like egg and rice. Oh man, come on, man. Come on, man. Like that was a that was like I knew what that was. I knew what that was. A syrup. Yo, I don't know where you come from, tablet. I don't know who you are, but a syrup sandwich? Shit. Yeah. And look, you know how, when bread used to get we used to freeze bread. And if bread ever got stale or old man, we just go ahead and make that into a grilled cheese sandwich. Stop that. For real. So I know what struggle is. And that's why I'm saying, ask yourself this question. And I just be, be real with me. Be real with me. How many times you came across $500 and spent it on stuff that you don't have no more? And that's just real. That's real question. How many times that you came across $500 and spent it on something that didn't do you any justice? Your mom still freezes bread. <laughs> Think about that. How many times we had 500 and didn't even know what to do with it? We blew it. So my point being is, get, you know why funding is never guaranteed? And I'm going to be real with you right here. This is right here. Catch it. I don't know if people have foreclosures, bankruptcies, judgments, liens, UCCs, et cetera, et cetera. I can't never guarantee something that I'm not given. The bank I have a relationship with, the bank says meet these requirements we're gonna fund i got people that got funded i do that all day long but there are things that the people right now and i cannot go into deep detail because there's people's situations but the people who did not get approved was because they got stuff that went against their requirement nothing more nothing less not one soul that i've ever thank god as long as i've been doing this and helping people get loans not one person has been declined because of something that i did no paperwork shit get you anything you need that's easy that's real easy so somebody says i need a step-by-step -step guidance that class will help you that's step-by-step -step on how to build your business 100 not even thinking twice about it how to start the legacy in what regards just opening them or what so a bank is going to give you you do myron do you know what accounts receivables are accounts receivables is the balance of money due to a firm for goods or services delivered or used but not yet paid for by the customers let me let me give you a real life example of that you purchase a home you want to rent that home out you sign you find somebody that wants to rent your house for one year your rent that you're charging is a thousand dollars a month they sign a lease the bank see your your accounts receivables line should say twelve thousand dollars at the beginning of the year why because every single month you're going to get a thousand dollars and over the course of the years you would have received twelve thousand dollars that translate to income so if you went to the bank in january and the bank say how much money you make whatever money you make 
add $12,000 to it because you're going to get that because you have a contract. So accounts receivables, a bank, if you have $12,000 in accounts receivables, a bank will give you a line of credit for half of that $6,000 because they know over the course of a year, you're going to get 12 and chances are they're going to give you a line of credit for 12 months. You basically, you know what I'm saying? If you do it right now, here is where wealthy people continue to stay wealthy. And I'm going to teach you how to become wealthy with this one strategy, accounts receivables. So I teach people how to open companies that are separate from you. So that way, each company is its own person. Here's the dot. I'm going to connect this dot. Now this dot. Okay. So whenever we go to the, to the internal revenue service, according to the internal revenue service, the term, whenever the United, whenever the term United States person is used in the United States, according to the IRS, whenever the term a United States person is being used, they are talking about a citizen or a resident of the United States, that's you, that's me, a domestic partnership between two people or domestic corporation. So whenever you go to apply for an EIN and you pick begin business and you select corporation, the IRS validates that by saying a corporation is a person or a group of people who establish a legal entity by filing an articles of incorporation with the secretary of state, granting it, it corporation it person certain legal powers rights privileges and liabilities hold on you local artists i'm gonna i'm gonna come back and ask me in about five minutes so with that context going back to that strategy accounts receivables so now everybody whoever you are if you want to set up your business if you set it up the right way let your business be a corporation i.e person i.e separate entity well, look what happens. We're going to go sell lemonade on the weekends. So we're going to take ABC lemonade stand or we'll set it up on a corner. And we're going to sell lemonade to all the cars passing by. Well, we're going to take a thousand dollars to invest into that business. We're going to take a thousand dollars cash and go deposit it into the lemonade company account. Now the lemonade stand making some money, whatever the case is. But then a week later, that operating company receives an email from ABC Corporation. Now remember, ABC Lemonade selling the lemonade. But then a week later, ABC Lemonade gets an invoice from ABC Corporation, the corporate office. Why? Because in order for ABC Lemonade to use that name, ABC Lemonade, it had to pay ABC Corporation to rent it. So then that's a thousand dollars. Okay, cool. ABC Corporation sits at one, two, three happiness lane. Well, once the ABC Lemonade Company pays the corporation, not a co the ABC Corporation, the parent company, the corp the corporate office, got a thousand dollars. Well, in a week later, since they rent space at one, two, three happiness street. That's owned by a property management company. Well, the parent company got to pay that thousand dollar bill. Well, then the real estate investment trust is owned by a holding company. Well, when the real estate investment trust got that thousand dollars paid, it paid the holding company because the holding company say, look, I'm going to hold all your assets, but pay me a thousand dollars. And then the holding company receives an invoice from the operating company for leasing the assets a thousand dollars. So you took one thousand dollars. And you deposited it into one company. But because that one company was doing business with the other company that's a separate entity. And then that one was doing business with another one. And then that one was doing business with another one. That's four different companies invoicing and receiving a thousand dollars. Now, if you did that four times in a month over the course of one year, each company would have a what? Accounts receivable line of forty eight thousand dollars. So then you take that, that means each company can get a line of credit for $24,000. That's $96,000 that you could have gone and get in a line of credit all because you deposited $1,000 and you did that for a year off of $1,000 accounts receivables. Reasons for decline. 
insufficient cash flow. Well, you got cash. Don't have no debt. Does each company pay? How does this affect when you file income taxes? Easy. You ready? <laughs> this is going to blow your mind. This is going to blow your mind. So if parent company receives 48000 but had to pay out 48000 what tax they pay? You don't pay taxes on income. You pay on, on you pay taxes on what's left. What taxes you paying? Wealthy stay wealthy because they understand how money works. We overcomplicate because we don't understand. And then when I tell people, it'd be like, man, it can't be that simple. It is. Your brain thought it was hard because you never thought it could be done. It can. Now, can I open up an EIN under my name? If I open under my name, what are the consequences? Let me see if I understand correctly. There has to be a responsible party that goes to get the EIN. But if the EIN is a corporation, then it will be seen there. A Google Meet would be awesome. Last question. That it, does it take a year before getting funding? No. Because why? Qualifications must be operational for at least six months. Legal status is required. All, owner, all owners with 20% or more must be included. The question was, why does the IRS let you get an EIN if it's not the right structure? The IRS is not in control of how you want to be treated in business. They can't force nobody to be treated one way or the other. You have to make a choice. You know, that old, that old freedom of choice is real. Why did you go get one and you couldn't answer yes to any of the questions they the irs said watch this this is actually a good segue do you need an ein you will need an ein i would never do john doe llc you know why because i want to sue john doe and you said that ain't me never own nothing control everything do you have an ein yes or no if you never went ask the irs do you need one the IRS says you will need an EIN if you answer yes to any of the following questions. So I'm going to ask you all a series of questions and you have to answer yes or no. You got to answer yes to at least one of them. Number one, first and foremost, an EIN stands for an employer identification number. An employer has employees. An employee is somebody that you pay and they have taxes taken out of their check. If you're not paying nobody and they got taxes automatically taken out of their check, then they're not, they're not employees. They, they're contractors. That's the that you don't you don't get an EIN for contractors. All right, here we go. Number one, first question. I want everybody to participate. Number one, do you have employees? Yes or no? Second question, do you operate your business? Now, Kenley, you even have employees at the LLCs too? You don't have to answer. That was a question. But second question, do you operate your business as a corporation or partnership? Now, I know you say yes because you have one corporation, but the LLCs, the answer to that would be no because they're LLCs. Do you file any of these tax returns? Employment, excise, or alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. An S-Corp status does not separate you from the business. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Minor children would only be employees if they get a W-2 at the end of the year. Would you Do you withhold income other than wages paid to a non-resident alien? Yes or no. Does your LLC offer a KEO plan? In other words, a pension plan or retirement plan? Yes or no. Last but not least. Is your LLC involved in a trust, an estate, a real estate, market investment, conduit, a nonprofit, a farmer's co-op, or a plan administrator? Yes or no? Now, the reason why I ask that is because there are so many people operating with an EIN number and shouldn't even have one. They only got it because here's what didn't win. It's classic. Well, the bank told me I need one. Who issued you the, I, the, the EIN number, the bank or the IRS? You get your EIN from the IRS. The bank's job is not to see if you are in compliance with the Internal Revenue Service. The Internal Revenue Service is going on the, whole, the, the idea that whenever you got your EIN number, you answer yes to any one of these. Now, here's what happens. Catch it, because this is going to be classic. The average person doesn't believe that this applies to them. Because somebody told them 
that they are separate from the business. Do you know why most people don't understand why they always have to personally guarantee the loan? Because your name is on the EIN paperwork. You can't be separate from something that your name is on. And I'm going to show you that. Go look at your IRS paperwork for your EIN. It's going to have your name and the business name. You, for people who believe that they are separate from something and their name is on that paper, one must ask themselves, is it just me or is this not making sense? And then when you run into somebody who does taxes, now mind you, I own a tax office. So before anybody come questioning, right? Well, my tax person, they didn't know how to, t they, didn't, they didn't explain it to me. It didn't make sense because the word common didn't come in the front of that. If your name is on something, chances are you are uh, responsible. Because what happens is when you get a corporation, now look at the difference. Your name is nowhere on it. How? This alone, this alone should tell you something. But let me show you how we go further down the rabbit hole. Here we go. If you have an LLC, do you know what a Schedule C is? When you file your taxes, yes or no? Do you know what a Schedule C is? Yes or no? For those that don't know, or for those that knew, a Schedule C, if you file your business taxes on a Schedule C, you, my friend, just hurt yourself. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because I already know the light bulb is about to go off in your head. The light bulb is about to go off. If you filed your business on a Schedule C, you did yourself a disservice. Well, Dwayne, why? Here we go. We all file taxes on a 1040. Your 1040 says U.S. individual income tax return. That's your. Can we agree that that's your tax return? Yes or no? Whenever you file your taxes on a 1040, that's your t income tax. Can we agree? All right. On line number eight, when you start to put your income, it says additional income from form schedule one. Additional income from schedule one. What is the schedule one? The schedule one is additional income. That means any additional income you have. Line number three, any business income attached to schedule C. Schedule C, profit or loss from business. Sole proprietorship. But wait a minute. That was a LLC. Yeah. But you're a sole proprietor. Wait. What? Yeah. And what is a sole proprietor? I'm glad you asked. A sole proprietor is the, the person who is the exclusive owner of a business. That's you. That's entitled to keep all profits after tax has been paid. That's you too. But liable for all losses. Well, what you mean? Liable. What does that mean? Liable. Responsible. By law, legally answerable. Wait a minute. I thought that was my business. If something happened to my business, I can't be sued. How can you not be sued if you just say that you're responsible by law, legally answerable? What does that make sense? That doesn't, that, that logic doesn't make sense. Because if you put your business on a schedule C, line A says principal business or profession, line B, line C says business name but before you can even go to a b c d or e it says who what is the name of the proprietor what is the name of the person who is the exclusive owner of this business that is entitled to keep all its profits but liable for all its losses that's you and then after you tell you know you report how much income you made you report everything you wrote off that's what you said right Chances are you're going to be either left with a profit or a loss. But either way, if you're left with a positive number or a negative number, that number passes through from this page back to the schedule one because that's where you got to put it. And then it says combines lines one through seven and nine. Put that back on the 1040 on line number eight. Not a problem. Line number eight. I put it right there. Line number nine. Add up all of those numbers on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is your total income. Your total income. For those that, you know, you heard the word, but never really understood the definition of the word, the definition of your is of or relating to you or yourself or yourselves, especially as possessor or possessors. So what does that mean? That means that when they're talking about that's your income, 
that you placed on the 1040, the bank asks you every time that you want to go get a loan. Let me see your taxes. You say, okay. You gave them your tax return that had your business on it. So then the bank says, well, since your name is on the EIN paperwork, your name is on the taxes. Well, you have to personally guarantee the loan. Seems logical, huh? And when you take that principle alone, it's almost like, well, I'll be damned. Somebody lied to me. Is it that somebody lied or you just was in a rush to go get the business? Now, this can be fixed. Don't get me wrong. But you have to want to know how to fix it. You have to want to fix it. Man, I spent so much money getting my business right. You know, you got so much. You spend so much money doing what you thought was right. Just call it the cost of learning because everybody want money. I know. How can I advise you on what business structure to get when I don't even know what your three to five year plans are? I can teach you how to make the money. I can tell you how to go get it. I can make you a million dollars in revenue in a year. You know what I can't do? I cannot make you drink from the water that I lead you to. I can't. And that's just real. I have so many people that have great ideas. And I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about amazing ideas. But those ideas become overburdened with frustration and you're overwhelmed and you're tired because you you just it's like you're, you're spinning your wheels and you don't know how to make it. I would never get another LLC for what? Now that I know. Oh, man. Never. Because there's too many benefits. Number one, from a legal perspective, they ain't touch me. From a financial perspective, eh? you will never save more than me. Cypress, Texas. I live in Cypress, Texas. I live in Copperfield, Texas time. I live in old Copperfield. Your dad sent you here. Thank, tell your dad, thank you. You know what I mean? So we don't understand how the dots connect. And all I try to do is connect dots for people. All I do is try to connect dots. If you want to convert over, it's real easy. I'm going to give you, there's a couple things that y'all can do. If y'all, if y'all really just want to get started, easiest thing that you can do. My website, and pull up my website. Well, everybody go take a look at the website and pull it up. That's how you can find my website. I'm going to leave that here while I answer a few questions. So with starting a business, we need to read and understand the IRS policies the most. My honest opinion, yes, but more importantly, you need to be able to hire somebody that can help you do it the right way if you don't know how to do it. And it's almost like the same thing, right? If, I, if I've never taken professional pictures of anybody and you needed a photographer for your wedding, would you hire me? If you wouldn't hire me, the same way I feel about people in business. If they, if this is not what they do full time, I wouldn't hire them. You need a bookkeeper you can trust? Well, I would like to be, think that I'm trustworthy. I can help you. We do that. Who would I hire? Me? <laughs> Me. No, jokingly. Um, I hire other companies to do certain things. What forms are used to send billing to different corporations? Uh... That's two. Well, it's a loaded. Well, it's not a loaded question. I I use invoicing between my companies. I have. Let's take that back. Invoicing is like the invoicing proves that I did it because I I bank. The way that I do my banking is I just have my my companies ACH one another on a on a on a consistent basis. The proof is I allow QuickBooks to capture all of those for all of my financial reports and I let the invoices just be for documentation purposes. Realtors are hard because there's so real estate is so broad. Just like you would work for a brokerage firm, I would open me my own brokerage firm and work for my own bro brokerage indirectly or real estate firm, um, et cetera, et cetera. I sure can to help with any type of business. Um, so everybody's asking me about industries. I need y'all to catch this, please, 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 please. If y'all don't walk away from this conversation with nothing, walk away with it from this. Stop thinking that what you do matters. It don't matter if you if you selling marbles. How your business is treated, how it's seen, is what we're talking about, not what you do. I have a lot of people say, well, I do this, I do this. It doesn't matter what you do. It's all about how you want the business to be viewed and treated. Do you want the business to be its own entity? That means that if something happens to the business, it doesn't happen to you. Corporation. There is no other structure. In fact, everybody say, well, I have an S corp. No, you're taxed as 
in S Corp. You don't go open in S Corp at the Secretary of State level because it doesn't exist. And there are some people that I have that have S Corp elections and don't even realize that the S Corp is not even recognized in some states. But the CPA told y'all to do it. I'm trying to tell you. Yep. Fast lane. Do I? I it's called leverage. I leverage companies all day long. That's what they're there for. For me, at, at least. Because why? If we look at this analogy, right? You ever heard of the analogy? You heard it. We went to a bank and the bank told you that you needed a co-signer. You ever heard that before? If you want to be separate, shop Juicy Dreams, C Corp. So if you ever heard you need a co-signer, and the first, the first time that you were ever told that you needed a co-signer, the first thing that you thought about is, man, I wonder who would come sign for me on that. Then you went down the list of people in your head, and you, maybe you were lucky, maybe you weren't. But if you set your companies up right, since a company is seen as a person, all your companies can be co-signers. You don't need nobody. Message. And if you build your company's credit, you do the math. Is it wise to buy a shelf corp? I'm against it. And I'm just, I ain't even toy with the question. I don't like it. Because you don't, you, you, when you buy, when people buy shelf corps, you're also buying the history. And let me show you, and let me give you an analogy. And I'm admiring, let me ask you a question. Whenever people open businesses, and this is for anybody, when you opened your business, did you go check to see if the name of that business was available in every state or just the state that you're in? No, they all have an EIN. They all have separate EINs. So again, when you came up with the name of your business, did you go check all the states or just the state, just your state, right? It's the same thing with UCC filings. People are buying shelf corps and they don't even know if they have UCC filings in other states. You don't know if they have liens or judgments in other states because every state operate different you open your business at the secretary of state you go get your ein from the fed from the internal revenue service the department of treasury the department of treasury is not a public database the department the secretary of state is the ucc filings is nothing more than basically whenever you go get a loan uh, a bank can go file a uniform commercial code basically just basically saying that you have a financial agreement with them for the amount of X, Y, and Z, whatever the case is. And that's just basically letting another lender know that, hey, this person has a loan somewhere else. Can the corporations be a one-man operation? <laughs> the answer to that question is yes. The answer to that question is yes. Hey, tell them the story about you leveraging to get your business in Louisiana. Okay, here we go. My wife and I, two weeks ago, opened a wedding venue in Louisiana. This wedding venue, total construction and everything, um, yes, Jay Mooney is St. Martinville, right outside of Lafayette. Um, total construction about 1.9 million. Well, obviously we have been renovating this thing for two years and obviously the wedding venue didn't make any money. It doesn't, we, we wouldn't open. So remember when I told you in order to get funding, you have to show that you can afford to pay the back the loan. Well, when we went try to get a million dollars from the bank, we couldn't show that the the venue itself can afford to pay the loan back. It had no revenue. So the bank said, well, sir, you're going to have to have two cosigners. I said, not a problem. Cosigner number one, Mac Enterprise Consulting. Cosigner number two, Mac Enterprise Tax Services. That's your two cosigners. Because why? The term United States person means a citizen or a resident, domestic partnership or domestic corporation. Those are my two people. Now, because... I just happen to know this stuff. Do y'all think that I got these companies as LLCs <laughs> or not? I am. The business is co-signed, not me. The business is co-signed, not me. And then if you notice, I have a real estate investment trust. A real estate investment trust is a property management company. I sit, <laughs> thank you. See, I sit in the CEO chair of Mac Enterprise Consulting. Why? Because you always want to open a business with the end in mind. If I want to leave a legacy, I have to build it. That means I have to sit in the chair. So that way I can get up out the chair when I need to be replaced. Mindset. Everything. So a real estate investment trust is nothing more than a property management company. Real estate investment trusts are companies that own or finance income producing 
real estate across a range of property sectors. Why? Why did I use a REIT? It's because a real estate investment trust must pay out 90% of their net earnings to the shareholders. For that, real estate investment trusts receive a special tax treatment. Unlike a typical corporation, they pay no corporate taxes on the earnings they pay out. So that means if this real estate investment trust, all the money that it makes, 90% of it has to be paid back to majority shareholder, which is my holding company. My holding company sits in a state called Wyoming. Why do I have my holding company sitting in Wyoming? Because according to Wyoming law, individuals and corporations do not have a income tax message. Yeah, exactly. Popular loaner exactly that part that part and you know what else happens it says i'm on this road why not in the turn in the financial world there's a term called retain earnings see whenever people advised you to go open a business account they never advised you on a savings account because we don't save money you know how we do we don't believe in saving money but a re retain earnings is nothing more than Instead of you taking the money out the company as a profit, you invest it back into the company. Well, whenever you do that, retained earnings can be kept in a separate account and are tax exempt until distributed as a salary, dividend, or bonus. Well, corporations are allowed to keep $250,000 in return, retained earnings. So that means... Here's the math. Operating company, C Corp. Parent company, C Corp. Real estate investment trust, C Corp. Holding company, C Corp. That's four companies, $250,000 each. That's a million dollars tax exempt for reasonable needs of the business. Huh. Uh -huh. Yep. What was that? What was that? Uh, what was that little, that little TikTok on that social media thing? I, I ain't arguing with you. I argue for what? This is golden. Dana, I need your help, Dana. Everybody, the guy right here is, says no names. Uh, can I can I can I share can I can I share a story if you don't mind, please? This guy, no names, came to me because he heard me do this presentation. Um, him and his significant other, they both were doing business, and they were kind of doing business, you know, a home based business. Now, mind you, just like everybody else, don't trust people. And you know, like he said, you know, he left me a testimony saying one time that. You know, his radars go up whenever, you know, certain people come up because he can kind of smell bull, bull crap from a mile away. So then he heard me enough and then realized, you know what, I'm going to take a chance because it made sense to him. And I said, all you have to do is just trust the process, trust the process. And I guarantee you it'll work. And there was a number of different things that we wanted to do. But one of them included, you know, them coming on, getting into their own space which they did. And then they wanted to get funding. And I said, just trust the process. And this is the result. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm excited, ecstatic, you know. That loan came through today for us. The 250 loan came through. Like you said, you know, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. And it, it, it's going to help us tremendously. It's going to help us do the things that we've been always wanting to do. What time is it? It's 646. Gina can't be here. She's so happy. Moving. She's still working. telling y'all like i don't just be giving on coming on here to just be talking and like i really be wanting to help people and it's like trying to tell people man i can lead you to the water i can't make you drink and that's real and so i decided and that's why if somebody wanted to know like seriously the motivation behind this right here and this is just real y'all the motivation behind this class this master class is because i have so much information that i give and people be where do I go find that? Where do I go do this? Where do I go do that? And I'm like, look, I can give you all of this content, all of it, 
All of it. $500. Carry on. I guarantee you. You're going to come back. You know why? Because you're going to be so filled with information. And you're going to be like, whoa. I didn't realize it took all that. It's because why? I teach people this is the foundation. Follow these, this roadmap. You don't lose. You don't lose. Ever. I got 38 new followers. That means there's probably 38 people in here that's probably never heard me speak before. Y'all want to see how powerful this map is? Y'all want me to show y'all? Is it going to... I want to see. Is it going to... Hey, hey, autism therapy. I can show y'all how powerful this is. I can, I can connect every dot. All right. Here we go. Since you was the first one to say yes, uh, is it Ski or Sky? Ski. Ski. So since Ski said yes... And Myron says yes. I'm gonna ask y'all a simple question. What's the what's the what's the most prestigious credit card you can ever get? Autism, I got something for you. Myron and, and Sky. Black American. Amex. All right. Amex. Got it. Yeah. Amex. Amex is strong. Here we go. This is gonna go fast, but pay attention. So whenever you go get an American Express card, the average person feel like, man, they didn't made it on up. I got me an American Express business card. Fast lane, you on that too. American Express business card. Catch it. What do we not? What do we not do? We don't read. But in a sense, we don't read. I'm gonna read it for you. So if you got an American Express business card, if you're gonna need the terms and conditions, it's gonna say by submitting this application, you, as you. As an individual and authorizing officer of the company are requesting to open an account in the name of the company. And A, are requesting that we issue cards as you direct. C, are agreeing to be jointly and severely liable with the companies for all the charges. Now, think about this for a second, Joe. I know you didn't open a business to always be tied up with your personal life. But there it is. It tells you exactly how they're treating you. But what happens when you go get a corporate card? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Things change. <laughs> Thank you for your interest in an American Express corporate card. This checklist is provided for you for your convenience to help make the application process more efficient. Listed below is the information you will need to have on hand to successfully complete the application. Take a moment to review the required items on the checklist and remember to have the information ready. The application checklist is not intended to be an application for a corporate card program. So this is the application. These are the things that they're going to ask you for. Number one, your legal company name, which should match your financial statements. And I'm going to stop right there. How can it match your financial statements if you don't have a bookkeeping process in place? That's phase number six, bookkeeping. And it should match the secretary of state. Remember. Your secretary of state should say corporation. Your secretary of state will never say S corp. Message. Your tax ID number. Corporate phone number. Not your cell phone. Corporate website. You don't need no website. Okay. You don't qualify. Well, I'm in this. I'm in that. I don't need. Okay. You don't qualify. Business street address. I'm going to go get me a P.O. box. We will need additional details about your business headquarter location. Must be a physical street address. No P.O. boxes are permitted. Huh? Okay. But that doesn't matter. What about us? You just read that if I go get American Express business card, I'm going to have to be jointly and severely liable with the company. What about now? Okay, not a problem. Authorized officer. First, personal information. First name, middle name, last name, date of birth. Where you see social ed. You're not going to see the social because why? That corporation is its own. Yes. Not with the email, uh, Dave. Not with the email. The email is something totally different. Business E address. Do not, under any circumstances, use what they call a personal email. Like Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail. What does that mean? If you don't have a domain, go consider that a personal email account. Oh, I don't need that. Okay. If that corporation is seen as a person, don't you have all those things personally? So that business needs its own things personally. And you ain't got to believe me. You'll just never get an American Express corporate card. You think American Express gonna call you and say, please, please get all of this. No. Message. So, with that being said, I'm gonna help y'all help y'all. Money seems to be the problem for a lot of people. 
I did something and it got activated. How you pay yourself on a dividend. Today, I have officially, I didn't send out an email yet, but I officially autism. You asked for it, there it is. I finally got my affiliate program. <laughs> I finally got it, there it is. I'm doing 25% commission right here, right now. Because why? I really think people need this right here. So I officially 100%. I'm about to put this link in here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put it right there. Hold on, wait for a second. Just sell the class. The class will do the teaching. Well, no, you do not need a lawyer. You can always hire Mac Enterprise Consulting. Hold on. Partners.macenterpriseconsulting.com. I am now 100%, 25% on everything. You tell people come get it, you get paid. There it is. That's how much I want to help people make money. And that's how much I want the information to get out. That part. It literally just got activated today. So I'm still kind of learning that. So I'm a, the, the, some, well, once everybody sign up, you're going to get an affiliate link. And there it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I signed up with this company, um, that is called OSI and they've, you get it, you know, for, so from people from an affiliate perspective, doing 25%. So imagine you selling somebody the legacy package, you can make up to 500 bucks. You, you, you ready to come out? No, it's not 500 to sign up. The mat, the class is $500. No, it's not. You don't have to, uh, Myron. So this is a couple of things. Hold on. Don't go nowhere. Realistically speaking. And let me just go back to it. The membership for $9 a month. And all my members, I get, I do a free class. It's an exclusive members only class once a month, every second Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. Central. And we teach, teach. No, no, no. Autism therapy. Let me go ahead and share this with you. Go back to it. I did one even better. The class, let me break it down for you. This is how you would, if you want to sell it, this is what you do. If y'all want to learn how to do business, there is a virtual how to build your business master class that took place you're going to have all the information and the classes for it why because i did an hour and a half class that taught everything about the business plan it's recorded i did another hour and a half class on everything about the llc's recorded how to build business credit hour and a half how to get business funding hour and a half six hours one weekend done on top of that ebook on how to build your business ebook on how to build business credit ebook on every business lender in every state that will give you money plus i have videos on each step of the journey explaining to you what each step is literally a business class for 500 dollars. change your entire life and if somebody buy it you get $125 that part imagine sell 10 a week that's over a thousand dollars and you know what you just did you're not you didn't sell them some cookies you sold them a life changing learning opportunity for $500 so not only did you make money you actually help somebody with knowledge if I purchase it for someone this is after I get my link so the smart thing to do is get your link <laughs> give them the link buy it you pay for it it'll cost you less than 100 you know what i'm saying in theory you didn't spend 500 for it because you was getting 125 back ding 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 oh by the way by the way i didn't do it for just the class if they were ready to move forward and they got the legacy builder let's do the math no 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 if autism therapy got somebody to purchase the legacy builder off of our website, she's gonna get 25% of it. It's 550 bucks. That can be your part-time job. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, think about it. 10 classes, $1,000. 10 classes, two legacy builders, $2,000. Hell, people on social media anyway, just tell them. And then, if the people were smart, then the people would get all this information, become a member, and now financial freedom is around the corner. Here's the crazy part. Literally, it costs them less overall just to get in the dope, less than $600. And yet, their entire life and perspective on business has changed forever. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Any questions? Everybody good? Everybody good. You processing? Good deal. Good deal. You can reduce my tax liability. Yes, you can. We don't use the word write-off. It's all good.
send them send them send them send them can you write this off you can use it as a uh learning expense in your business 100 percent 100 percent every business should have training you just purchase training for your business every single time that's why i don't call it anything other than of course you go into business school how do you change it we would we have to file paperwork to change it we have to fill out a plan of conversion the articles a statement of conversion it all depends on what state you're in is that done through the hours no we do it for you we do it for you i have an attorney on on staff that helps with that y'all's job as business owners is to run your business mac enterprise's job is to get it all done for you catch that this class is for you to always go back and reference i still got some of my master's degree books and doctor my doctoral books there are times like for instance let's show you where some of my thinking come from there's this book called the goal it talks about the theory of constraints right so for instance let me pull up something real quick one second one second i'm gonna read something to y'all now this book ain't for everybody because it talks about manufacturing now why would i want to know about manufacturing the author um is eli m gold rat and, I'm gonna, and I'm just, let me put it up right here now why did i want to talk about manufacturing people let me read this to y'all it says the goal is about new glo glo global principles of manufacturing it's about people trying to understand what makes their world tick so they can make it better as they think logically and consistently about their problems they are able to determine cause and effect of relationships between their actions and results in the process they deduce some basic principles which they use to save their plant and make it successful but the point of it is is i was showing how if you take an assembly line right the assembly line can be really efficient if all things are happening but if something happens cause that would stop the assembly line then it affect the outcome it's the same thing that people do in their businesses right they don't understand the cause and effect i try to show people the cause and effect of running a business but setting it up when you don't set up the business properly it affects your ability to grow and get funding so there's a theory when it comes to strength constraints ever you, you ever ask yourself why is it that if you're on a highway and the highway is a straight line but there always seems to be backed up traffic people don't even understand it one stopped car can affect the traffic behind them for miles and miles and miles and miles and people don't if and i and i use that logic in business because if i do this what is the effect of it what like you know what i'm saying so I, mm -hmm. there's another one too uh one second let me put up another one for y'all one second this one. all right there's another book that i read every now and then right budgeting basics dictionary of legal terms when i tell you i have a wealth of resources for people i don't even touch half of the resources that i I'm still trying to people. To, I'm still trying to get people to grab this. But man, my man, y'all have to understand. Like I have literally nearly 20 years of experience doing this type of work. Good, bad, and indifferent. Sir, it's funny. Hold on. Wait. Watch. Look what it says in yellow. Can you see that? Definitions and explain explanations for nine lawyers. These are all legal terms. So because I didn't pass the bar, I don't know legal terminology stop that man it's baron's dictionary of legal terms a definition and explanations for nine lawyers more than three thousand legal terms explained in clear simple english legalese if you will for the average person all of this stuff that people talk about let me see something hold on boy don't tell me if i see something hold on 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 wait 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 one second can i read something for y'all if you don't mind Mm. I swear, like literally, and I hate to use the word swear, but I just had a refresher on something that I haven't read in a long time. And now I'm about to, this dude here. So this comes, legal terminology, catch this. Corporation is an association of shareholders, a shareholder created under the law as an artificial person, having a legal entity separate from the individuals who compose it. With the, with the capacity of continuous existence or succession, continuous 
existence or succession and the capacity of taking, holding, and conveying property, suing and being sued, and exercising um, like a natural person other powers that are conferred on it by law. A corporation's liability is normally limited to its assets. The shareholders are thus protected against personal liabilities for the corporation. The corporation is taxed as a special tax rate and the corporation must pay an additional tax on dividends other than profits from the corporation. Corporations are subject to regulation, etc., etc. But catch this, you know, I keep telling people, Wyoming. Special statutes have enacted in many jurisdictions to permit single individuals or closely knit small groups of individuals to form a closed corporation. That's what you're opening Wyoming. To limit their personal liability, but to carry on the business without the formality of annual meetings and actions by board of directors. So when you hear the term that you got to have all of these different things, no, you don't. You're a closed corporation. Message. Y'all going to learn one day. I'll be telling the truth. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When you know better, you do better. So with that being said, thing, you still in here? Thank you for the teddy bear. Bear. Ladies and gentlemen, thing, are you still in here? Maybe he left. Hold on a second. So even though they provide the best benefits, we don't have to register with Wyoming or Nevada. You know, you don't have to. You do not have to. I just, again, it's just a way to, you know, y'all. They have just, I just read, I swear in the legal definition, I just read something y'all thought I talked about. Expect to, to be, well, I'm about to, my entire arsenal. Catch it. I need y'all to pick. Can I, can I, can I say this real quick? Hold on. Y'all. I am now about to make my entire arsenal of what I say even worse. I'm about to put y'all on game. I swear. I can't make this up, y'all. Limited liability. Company. Company. Owners of an LLC. Owners of a company are called members. Company. The definition. Company. A group of people organized to perform an activity business or industrial enterprise you're not even a company when you're by yourself message <laughs> when you are a single member llc you're not even recognized as a company because the definition of a member is a person animal or plant belonging to a group Owners, plural, of an LLC are called members, plural. A member is a person, plant, or animal belonging to a group. The definition, according to the legal term of a company, is a group of people. Uh-uh. Uh my, my lawyer told me. I know. Your lawyer did tell you. So, LLCs are like duplexes. Man, I can write so many blogs on this. Okay. I digress. I'm done. Wow. 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 A company doesn't even. Oh, my word. That further adds to the problem. Sincerely. Oh, this deep. Anyway, I'm going to run, y'all. I didn't been on here two hours because I'm telling you, I can feel myself going down the rabbit hole. Yes, I do do one on ones. If you go on a one on one, just go to my website, click consultations, and there you go. I can definitely help. And by the way, in case y'all didn't know, I don't ever do this much, but I'm going to do it today. This is why. I don't ever talk bad about people, but if the people that you're learning from ain't sourcing their information, if the people you're learning from aren't giving you like factual data, not the people that should be teaching you. And that's real. So again, feel free to follow me on my social media. I have a lot of stuff on TikTok. Um, I have, I mean, I'm sorry, on YouTube. I, you know, definitely interested. If you want to learn, like seriously, if you just want to learn, if you want to, and you don't, you know, like not everybody wants to, but literally this here is for you to learn. It's already recorded. It's full of information. This, this is almost like your, your, your business blueprint for real. So hope to see some of you all get it. Y'all have a good one. Thank y'all.